training. Yusuf Fakiri, Suleiman's brother, joins me now. Yusuf, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you very much for having me, Angie. I know you've been pushing for quite some time for the Ontario government to make that report into your brother's death public. There was an exchange that did take place in the Ontario legislature um, with the NDP and the Solicitor General. Your thoughts on what the response has been, no direct response to your brother's case? It's quite disappointing, Angie, that uh, you have the minister that even denies my brother's death uh, let's be clear here, Suleiman was killed under government care. At the time of his death, both his legs and his hands were tied. He was pepper sprayed twice. He was in segregation. He had a spit hood. Many of the guards have been fired that were responsible in his death. They were suspended as well. So for the minister to not respond is quite an insult, not just to Suleiman or to the Fakiri family, but to all Canadians and Ontarians that are suffering from mental illness that are in these institutions. Uh, minister Jones knows very well about this case, and it's quite, uh, frankly, very shocking and a preposterous and unnecessary statement for her to make to not even acknowledge my brother's death. Have you heard anything directly from the Solicitor General's office on this? Any direct um, comment, any direct action that they're saying that they're going to be taking in terms of working with you on this case? Since the beginning, Angie, the government has not been forthright with my family. They've continued to stonewall my family in terms of our questions. They continue to not give us accountability and transparency into my brother's death. Uh, we, and we continue, in, in, in the beginning of your piece, you said the, the investigation report that involved the two the multiple guards that were fired and the ones that were suspended. The government still has not made this report public. People need to know what happened. They need to know that a man who had a mental illness who shouldn't even been there was killed under government care, and the government continues to not make that information public. You mentioned earlier that this is a fight not just for your brother, but for so many others um, in this very difficult and unfortunate journey that you've been through. What do you want to see change? There is many Suleimans, as you said, Angie. There's the Ashley Smiths, there's the Pierre Corleans, there's the, there's the Justin saint Amour, the Cass Geddes, the Regis Korshinsky Paquets, the Jazz Chowderies. This story is not just about my brother. It's a story among many Canadians and Ontarians where there's this fatal nexus, nexus of incarceration and mental illness. We need to understand that people with mental illness should not be in jail. But we also need to call it out that there should not be different standards for law enforcement and for the rest of us. There needs to be accountability and transparency. And this is what Solomon's case is about. Ultimately, what it's about is to get transparency and accountability for Sully to make sure another Ontarian does not go through what my family goes through. But it seems to be very hard to gain accountability and transparency because law enforcement are treated differently from the rest of us. So where are things going to go from here, um, you know, with, when, when you talk about this type of change, but specifically with regards to your brother's case? Absolutely. So we're calling out right now that the post-mortem report that was done in 2017, the coroner's report, that is to say, needs to be updated, it needs to be updated uh, and needs to be reviewed by the pathologist, in that Suleiman, we now have an eyewitness to Sully's death. We now have a guard that admitted fault, that said that we misused use, that we, there was use of force that was not used appropriately, and we misused the spit hood. So we need the postmortem report to be reviewed and updated, and that needs to be changed because we need that to be changed so we can get accountability and transparency for Sully's death. We'll continue to follow the story with you, but Yusuf, I really appreciate you giving us your time to give us the the latest on this very difficult uh, situation for you and your family, Yusuf Fakiri, brother of Suleiman Fakiri. Yusuf, you take care. Thank you very much, Angie, for your time. You're welcome.